What's going on you guys? Welcome back to EP09. Alright, we're going to start this one off with an update from Emmanuel Alvarez. Emmanuel is currently sitting at 7 weeks out of his pro debut at the Puerto Rico Pro, and this guy is an absolute monster. He's definitely within that mass monster spectrum, but that small midsection and that X-frame really give him a good balance of aesthetics. Now, Emmanuel turned pro at the 2021 North Americans in the super heavyweight class, no surprise there, and at that time, he was sitting somewhere around 240 pounds, so he made the decision to take an entire year off from competing to improve his physique, as many pro bodybuilders do these days, and since then, he's put on at least 20 pounds of muscle, if not more. He weighed in at 270 pounds at 11 weeks out, so we could see somewhere around 20 pounds of stage weight that Emmanuel put on in his year-long offseason, and it looks like he's getting closer to really being competitive at that pro level. I'm not sure how tall he is, but he looks like a tall bodybuilder, but for a guy who I would consider one of these aesthetic mass monsters, like I said before, he's got a crazy small midsection, he's got huge quads, great quad sweep actually, he's got those flaring quads where you see the roundness right up to the hip tie-in, which is not always something very prevalent in especially taller bodybuilders, he's got good flow, I really like his abs and thigh pose, his legs look massive from the back too, I think he could use a bit more size in the arms and more depth to his back, his posing in general is something he looks like he could really work on too, but with all that, I'm sure that he'll continue to improve by adding generally more size in the upper body too. Now, I don't know who else is doing the Puerto Rico Pro, but anyone that ends up standing next to Emmanuel might end up getting dwarfed, and I'm overall very impressed by the progress he's made in the last year. So keep your eyes out for Emmanuel Alvarez in just under 7 weeks at the Puerto Rico Pro. Alright, next up, we have an update from Ross Flanagan at one week out from the Cali Pro and two weeks out from the Toronto Pro. And Ross has really dialed in the conditioning here. That X-frame from the back is just so impressive looking. The hamstrings are absolutely shredded. He's got a ton of detail in these back shots. Ross is really on track to make a name for himself this season. Now, do I think Ross can win either the Cali Pro or the Toronto Pro? Well. I think Ross is going up against some stiff competition at both of these shows, so I don't see Ross beating someone like Tony O'Burton and Cali. We know Beef Stu will be doing the Cali Pro as well. He might have a hard time beating Stu from the front and the side, but I think he can take him in the back poses. I think the comparison between Ross and Patrick Moore is going to be interesting to see. And as far as the Toronto Pro, Ross has some juggernauts to deal with there. Ian Valier, Hassan Mustafa, so if Ross wants to punch his ticket to the Olympia this year, he may have to consider competing in another show. But I think it's just a matter of more overall size that Ross needs. Once he gains that, I think we'll see Ross on that Olympia stage someday. So I think he's going to be in the first callout for these two upcoming shows, and we'll see what he can do against some tough competition. Alright, so I wanted to get in some last minute physique updates before the prejudging starts for the New York Pro today. We had a few guys drop some physique updates, so let's start by taking a look at Josef Vetten, who Mark's Max Muscle has placing quite high at this show I might add. He's also doing some posing here with Slavaj Bednar, and I do think both of these guys look great. Conditioning looks pretty good, I do think they could be a bit sharper here, but they might have some more filling up to do as well. Looking at Joe Seaman after his first coat of tan, Joe looks like he's dialed in pretty well. You can see the detail in the quads, the quads really dialed in very nicely. I'd like to see some more of the striations in the chest and the shoulders. If Joe had more of that drier look to bring out the vascularity, I think it would really serve him well. But he's coming in big, he definitely didn't sacrifice any size. He's got the fullness working for him, so he will outsize a lot of competitors this weekend. He's going to be very competitive from the back, and that most muscular, I'm a really big fan of that. We'll see if he can bring out more of that conditioning before pre-judging. Stuart Sutherland checked in at 14 hours out, and it looks like the carb up really brought out a lot of the fullness and detail in Stu's physique. He looks massively improved in the back double. He actually looks a lot bigger here in the back. There's more depth than what we've seen up to this point. The only thing Stu has been missing is in the back department. So Stu, with an improved back, really makes him that much more dangerous. Of all of the updates that I've seen so far, 
I think this back shot of Stu impressed me the most. He's going to have a great showing here in New York. Robin Strand checked in at one day out, and I think Robin is bringing the best conditioning of anyone I've seen so far, especially from the back. I haven't seen anyone with this kind of detail on the hamstring so far. Without a doubt, Robin Strand is bringing his best package to date to New York. He really pushed the conditioning, and that's going to give him a serious edge in that battle for the top four, top five. I mean, being this shredded, he might get compared for that top three in this lineup. We've also got some check-ins here from the heavy favorite to take home the win this weekend, Tony O'Burton. And you know what? It looks like he's staying on that trajectory. You can see the vascularity in the quads and in the abs, which are both a true sign of being absolutely inside out peeled. The striations in the shoulders, the detail in the back, combine that with the roundness, fullness, and his superior structure. There's a reason why Tonio is one of the most talked about bodybuilders out there right now. And for the first time actually peaking for a show with his coach Dylan Blum, I would say this is a damn good first run at it. And as they continue to work together, without a doubt, they'll be able to improve on this. So Tonio is definitely the one to beat this weekend. Prejudging for the men's open starts soon with the finals later this evening. We'll see who's going to take home that victory, the ring, the check for $10,000, the prestige of winning one of the biggest shows in bodybuilding, and most importantly, the Olympia qualification. So let me know down in the comments, who do you guys have winning the New York Pro this weekend? Anyway, that's it for me in this video, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to EP09. Be sure to like and subscribe.